Okay, what's up? We are live. Looks like we've already got a few people in the room. Are y'all ready for day three of the 12 days of live streaming? I can't believe that I've kept it up this far, so we're going to see what it does today. I do have a topic today that I want to talk about, so we can start off with that. I'm going to kind of let the room fill up a little bit before I get into it. That way folks can uh, take part in the conversation here. What I am going to do is I'm going to drop a link to join the stream. If you'd like to join the stream after I get through with my topic and you want to talk about whatever you want to talk about, you want to talk about old school stories, you want to talk about uh, what you've been doing today, car audio, you have questions, whatever, I'm going to drop that link. You can join in. We can chat. All you need is your phone, your tablet, your computer, whatever, and some headphones. So let me um, let me grab that link real quick and drop it in the chat for you. There it is. All right, who we got in here? Uh, Mike Lee, Eric Dudley, Quentin, what's up? Franco, Chris Franklin, thank you. Ray Rios, what's up? Oh, man. The Niners lost, bummer. Let me grab a drink here real quick. Dragon 51, what's going on? So what are y'all up to today? You got uh, everything going cool in your world? All right, we're starting to get a few people in here. Uh, DIY audio guy, what's going on? My audio level's good today. I'm, uh, I, I noticed I was just a little bit low yesterday. I bumped up about 10%, so maybe we'll be better. I'm, I'm not really on the mic. I'm just a little bit away from it, but I don't want it to be so hot that I'm burning your ears up. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, Maddie. Yeah, what's going on? Eating, uh, eating ham and taters. Nice. Cool. Victor, what's up? All right, so... I have topics today. If you guys haven't already seen, uh, well, you haven't seen because you probably haven't looked at the description yet, but today we're going to talk about deals. This is one of the last few days that you're going to be able to order something and get it before Christmas. So I've got a few deals here I want to check out and uh, we're going to check them out. So We'll start off with the first one. It's something I shared on my Facebook page. You know, some of you guys are on Facebook, some of you aren't, but we'll start off with this and uh, we'll check it out real quick. I'll share my screen as well. Again, I'm going to drop that link in case anybody wants to join in and just chat, you know, just have a good time. Click that link, have headphones in. We can chat after my topic, that is. So let me share my screen here and we'll talk about the very first deal it is a hammer crimp okay so i shared this deal on my page earlier today or this morning it is a fantastic deal for a hammer crimp the uh price on this is 9.99 which already right off the back that's cheap I think these typically go, I, I want to say I paid $18 or $19 for mine, maybe $20 or better. But if you see right here, and I don't know if you can see, but there's a coupon where you get an extra 20 or extra 10% off, and it brings this down to $9. So fantastic deal. If you got Prime, obviously, you're going to be able to get this shipped for free. If you spend over $25, you are going to be able to get it shipped for free as well. So if you haven't watched my video about uh how to crimp a lug i'll i'll add a link in this description and a link to this product as well is in the description and, and it's an affiliate link of course you guys know the whole spiel on affiliate links you know use the link it help it gives a small fraction to me so um the thing with this this hammer crimp is so on my testing i actually prefer a hydraulic crimper 
But the, the thing about the hydraulic crimper is that it has its advantages and its disadvantages. Now, as far as quality of the crimp, I think that it does a, a better job than the hammer crimp. That being said, it it's quite a bit of setup. You know, it, it's not quick when you're setting it up, especially the handheld types like I have. You're using, you know, dies that sometimes aren't always perfect, especially if you're using uh, oversized lugs. And, you know, that, that could be tricky to figure out when you're doing that. This this one right here, it's it's one size fits all. Uh, basically, you need a hammer or a you know a mallet of some sort to really get a good striking force on it, and uh, it's not going to get any winging like you could get from a hydraulic crimper if you use the wrong size die, and if you don't have a bunch of dies, the oversized Caradio lugs are they're hard to match, and I really haven't I haven't ordered any new dies, but none of my dies will fit the oversized Caradio. Uh, lugs properly e on four or one out so i've had trouble with that but but the quality of the crimp is better on a hydraulic the quality of the crimp on this hammer uh lug the this hammer style uh crimper i think it's it's very 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 good when i cut this open i mean it was almost completely melted and i didn't even use a sledgehammer on it you know Typically, you want to use like a like a small two or three pound sledgehammer. I, I just use regular old framing hammer on this, and it still crimped very well. So solid deal right here. I'm gonna pop back in the chat so I can kind of see what you guys were uh, what you guys are saying here. Ziggy, what's going on? Dragon driving to Clarksville. That's right up the road, man. You should stop by. I could have had you on the chat. <laughs> had you on live. Uh, Maddie Devine, you know, you say, is this the one that I would recommend to use? Definitely. The, here's the issue with the hammer, at the hammer crimper. If you need to crimp a wire that is already in your vehicle, the hammer crimper is an absolute nightmare. That's where the hydraulic crimper would definitely help you out. It'll be cumbersome even with the hydraulic crimper, but you can do it with the hammer crimp. It, it's, it's almost non-doable unless you got a spot you can really well on that. So, that is, you, you really need both if you, if you want to be covered all the way. But if you can do all your crimps beforehand, the hammer crimp, the hammer style crimp, it's just, uh, it's quick, easy. There's no, there's hardly any setup. And at, you know, nine bucks right here, if you've already got a hydraulic crimper, I think it's worth picking up. I have both. I use both. So in my opinion, it, it's nice to have both and you can get a, a cheap hydraulic crimper. I've got, I got a cheap one off eBay that was around $32 shipped. And I, I actually, I love that thing, but if I'm in a hurry or, you know, I don't, I'm doing a lot of them. The hammer crimp is the way that I go with that just because it gets a very, very good crimp. And, uh, it's the difference is really negligible to me when you, when you look at it overall, yes, the hydraulic crimper does crimp better, but how much difference you can tell in your performance or over time, do I think that this one's going to let in, you know, it's going to get oxidized or anything? No, absolutely not. It, this is a very good crimp. So let's see here. John Greer, what's up? RVH, what's going on, dude? Kent Blankenship. Um, yeah. Mary, I didn't even see your comment, uh, but for sure, that's the problem. Once you've already uh, put the wire in the vehicle, the hammer crimp is pretty much useless to you, 100%. Mustang Ranch Garage, what's going on? <laughs> Jesse Strong, crimping ain't easy. No doubt about that. So uh, let's go on to my next deal. We'll check it out. I have to stop sharing this screen here and open up my next tab. Where are we at here? Oh, okay. Um, this one was actually shown to me by Eric uh, Eric Dudley. I think, yeah, Eric Dudley, you're in the chat, aren't you? You showed me this deal, I believe. Um, it's the Rockford Fosgate. They're doing a flash sale on apparel. So... The deal is it's half off of, of uh, 
You know, I think there's nine different things that are half off plus free shipping. So I, I went ahead and ordered one of these today. I'll show you guys a shirt that I ordered. I'm a plain guy. And, uh, you know, this one's okay, the, the black shirt. But I went with the uh, the white tee here, $7.50, shipped. I mean, you can't really beat that. Let me see if you can see the front. Oops. What am I doing here? There we go. That's the back here. You can see it's pretty cool. Uh, it's a pretty cool logo, I think. And let's see if we can get to the front. I'm gonna have to clip click it again. Oh, it's got the same logo on the front, but I mean, seven fifty shipped. I think it's cool. I think it's a cool shirt, and you you've got more options here as well. They've got the uh, the black tee here. This one's kind of cool. You know, I'm not really into the digital camo type stuff, so that's why I didn't go with that. But they've got a, you know a NASCAR type logo, a uh, woman's logo. That'd be good for uh, oh uh, my buddy uh, Curtis Curtis Bosto, his wife Allie. She's She's a Rockford Fosgate fan too. You know, that, that'd that be a good shirt for her to pick up. Um, they got a sweatshirt for 15 bucks, man. I mean, a polo right here, a black polo, Rockford logo, 20 bucks. I mean, this one, this one's not bad. I probably should have picked this one up. Just a regular Rockford Fosgate. I think it's pretty cool. What do y'all think? Let's see. Yeah, Eric Dudley. <laughs> Je Jesse Strong's he he's hitting us with the puns today, man. Very punny. Ain't nothing wrong with a little black and grind, that's for sure. Snow and ice, nothing nice. RVH, you must be driving uh or you must be uh on the road. Or maybe it's snowing at your house. I don't know. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. I don't know if you guys uh you guys are into Rockford or or into um into uh you know Karate merch, but I think it's pretty cool. So let me stop sharing that screen. I'll go on to my next deal. We'll check out and see what else I got going on here. Uh what oh, okay. Right here. So, uh, Sun Electronics right now is having a deal where you can get a free enclosure with your uh, certain speakers. So, this, I thought this was a good deal, especially, you know, not everyone wants to build their own closures. I completely understand that it can, it can be a nightmare at times. So, if you just want a quick something to throw together, something to throw in your car, I think you got some good options here. And if you spend over $50, I believe shipping is free as well. So good deals here. Starting off with the uh, Hyphonics, it comes with a little Scosh uh, sealed enclosure. It'll be a decent little prefab enclosure, you know, just like any other. $40, um, you're probably going to have to pay for shipping on this one. So I don't know what that'll be. And to taxes in your area, depending on, you know, what your local laws are. But 40 bucks is not bad for a 12-inch subwoofer in an enclosure. The Belva, same thing. You know, it, these are entry-level subs, but they're decent. You know, I, I've I haven't uh I've played with the cheap Hyphonics. I think it's okay. It's not great, not perfect. I've never played with the Belva. Um, they've got a Kenwood here, 10 more dollars. I haven't played with that subwoofer. It's a 200 watt RMS subwoofer. Um this one, this is the one that I would lean towards if you're going to buy this because I believe this one is going to get you free shipping uh, being over that limit. It's a 350-watt uh, RMS dual 2-ohm, which is good because if you're running a single sub, you typically you're going to want to run it 1-ohm mono or 4-ohms mono. This will get you there, $60.00. The NVX subwoofer, this is actually, let's click on this one so we can check it out. This is a nice subwoofer. Um, I've heard several of these, and they're nice subwoofers. They're they're very uh, 
well built for an entry level subwoofer. I don't know if you can't tell, but they've got you know a deadening, dampening type material on their stamp basket. They've got nice push terminals. Uh, it's got you know a small motor as you'd expect, but it's got a rubber surround, which is which is nice. I like the seamless part with with the uh, no dust cap. I think it's a clean look. I like the logo. Sixty bucks, in my opinion, plus free shipping, as you can see here. So if you don't have tax on this in your area, sixty dollars for a subwoofer shipped to your door in an enclosure, one that's of quality, dual two ohms, three hundred fifty watt RMS. I think that's a hard deal to beat. It's it's one of the best deals uh, going right now, in my opinion. But definitely, definitely check this out if you're wanting to get a sub and a box. I will say that they do have other deals you can get. If you're going to buy some coax speakers or some component speakers, they're giving away some um, sound dampening material with that, the MVX sound dampening material. So... You can check that as well. It's not quite as uh, good of a deal, I don't think, as this. But it depends on what you need. If you don't need a subwoofer and you need some mids, uh, you might look at that. Let's see who else we got in here. Victor finally got live to chat here in Belize. Uh, welcome, man. Like having you on board. Thank you. Yes, this is something that I didn't think. Uh, RVH says, if the prefab specs match, no biggie, go for it. And that's 100% what's going on here. You're not going to be able to see it, obviously, because you know YouTube is terrible for streaming. But this subwoofer calls for the recommended sealed enclosure is 1.2 cubic foot, 1.25 cubic foot sealed. And the enclosure that they give you is exactly 1.2 cubic foot sealed. So that's the exact right enclosure. And that's something that I did look at, but I forgot to mention here. Good thing RVH has got my back. So definitely th this is the deal. If you got if you need a subwoofer and you don't want to build a box and you got $60 to get it shipped to your door, I mean, come on. That's killer. I mean, I almost ordered one of these just to have it on the test bench to play with stuff. Oh, Mark. Mark's in the chat now. What's going on? Let's see who else we got in here. Yeah, this is where the deals are, man. Vegas, <laughs> Vegas flea market. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so let me let me close this screen out. We'll go on to I believe I have one final deal for you guys. Um and then if you guys want to let me let me get this get this uh thing going on. If anybody wants to chat, I'm dropping the link again to the StreamYard chat if you want to get online chat ask questions do anything i'll let your boy get on here let's talk you know whatever you want if you want to cool if not cool i've got one more deal i'm going to show y'all but i'm going to try to see if we got any more questions that i can answer before we get into that mustang ranch garage was use these for the 150 spl challenge um you know what you you could you could but i think that maybe if you're going to use them for that challenge in particular i think that there could be de better deals to have on on cheaper speakers that you can get more of so um i don't know that i'd use that on the 150 challenge simply because it's going to be a good speaker it's going to get pretty loud it's going to sound good but the value in that deal is that you're getting the box and the enclosure for $60 shipped to your door that's the big value it's going to sound good, but as far as SPL, you could definitely make these subs loud in a big ported box, I think, or pretty loud. But then you're kind of uh, losing the deal of the free box because you're not going to be using that. Okay, uh, Bobby asked, what's my take on the Stinger 4000 six-channel RCAs uh, on Amazon? Are they real deal or knockoffs? I haven't seen those yet, Bobby. Drop a uh, drop a link in the chat, and I'll check them out live if you if you can. 
Um, I don't know if they're knockoffs or not. I I use Stinger 4000 Series RCAs. I've used them in several installs, and I had never had a problem. I mean, they're they're very simple, but they they get the job done. You don't get no noise out of them. So, let's see. Uh, what's my favorite Pioneer deck of all time? If it has to be one that I've used, it'd probably be the ADPRS. But you guys know I got some. I've got a lot of problems with the PRS, uh, ADPRS as well. But if it's one I was just sitting there looking at the uh, the ODR stuff, like the the P1 and a few other, those are kind of the dream units. They're not you know up to date, but that's some of them. That the 99 PRS would be cool, although it has its flaws as well. But mainly the ODR stuff. That that's the stuff that kind of uh, speaks to me. All right, let's see what we got going on. Mark said he used a hundred dollar prefab uh, ported box in the old school SPL challenge. Yeah, he actually killed it in that too. For some reason, the YouTube notification that that YouTube notification system is a it's terrible. That's why I've been trying to post on my Facebook page when I can or the community tab. And sometimes that doesn't show up. They they need to fix that. You know, it's not like we're the only people having problems with it. Big YouTubers having trouble with it. And yeah, it's a it's an absolute nightmare. Yes, Jesse Strong, the uh, Pioneer P1R. Let's see what we got. Um Bobby, they should be the real deal. I don't think knockoffs of Stinger. They're twenty bucks. Uh, that does that sounds cheap. Twenty dollars for the six channel set, but it could be on sale. I want to say I, I I paid like twenty eight dollars for the four thousand series. So the thing about Amazon is if you order them and they are fake, Amazon will give you your money back. They make shipping so easy, or return shipping so easy. I mean, I had to return something to Amazon. It was a uh, bluetooth speakers that didn't pair up right or bluetooth headphones that didn't pair up right literally all i did was i I done the return online and you could just take them into a coals and hand them the product and they give you a receipt you don't even got to pack them up or anything they'll just take them right back so if they're fake i mean send them back man uh diy audio guy says he's running the Six channel Stinger RCAs from Amazon. Not sure which ones they are. They came in Stinger branded packaging. Yeah, cool. Yeah, uh, Linus Tech Tips uh, talked about YouTube about it. Uh, yeah, that's for sure. The the freaking notification they, they drive me crazy. It said uh, there's a ten minute delay regarding going live streaming and sending out your notification. Uh, I suggested to Derek that you guys should do a, a prefab box shootout. Um, you know, that'd be cool. You know, I, I'd love to do something like that, but I I would like the prefab box manufacturers because if we do something like that, you know, there's going to be, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 people that are, that are going to try this, you know, they should cut us some kind of deals, I think. The people that are competing and going to buy these products, if, if we could get them to say do a 10 or 15 or 25 percent off of their boxes for this challenge, you know, promo code old old school SPL challenge or something like that, I think that would be cool if if we could work something out like that. But uh, I think that'd be fun. Okay, I'm going to go into my final deal of the day. If you guys have any questions about anything else, drop them in the chat. We'll talk about them. I'll discuss them. Um, let's go on to this final deal here. And this deal is is a very good deal. Let me open it up here. So let's share this screen. All right. This is at uh, Dropping Hertz. They're running a huge deal on the big-ass ports. And I don't know if you guys have ever used these. 
if you even know what they are, but they're just flared PVC ports. Um, they've got them completely done for you. It's it's very easy to use, and I think they're cool. You, you could paint them. You could do all kinds of stuff to them. They're easy. They're easier than building slot ports, but more importantly, they give you flexibility. As you can see right here, they've got like a port extension kit that you can buy. So you can cut for this port and you can play with it. You can see that if you need, you know, you can kind of tune down, tune up. So that that's what I like about these. I like the adjustability. I, I think I'm going to go ahead and order one of these today while they're on sale because I want to play with an enclosure, an SPL enclosure that I can kind of play with the tuning on the port to, to try to see what kind of SPL I can get out of, you know, whatever sub I'm using. But these are definitely cool for that. And they're a, a big sale right now. You hardly ever see these on sale. So you definitely, if you're thinking about these, definitely pick them up before this sale ends. And I'm not exactly sure when a sale ends. But starting off with the 6-inch Versa port, Typically, it's fifty nine ninety nine. It's on sale for thirty nine ninety nine. So you know that's that's twenty bucks right there. That's that's a pretty big discount if you ask me. Again, the eight inch port, typically seventy nine ninety nine. It's on sale for forty nine ninety nine. That's thirty bucks off the price. The ten inch port is fifty nine ninety nine right now, which is typically the price of the six inch port. That's forty dollars off. That you know, that's that's forty one percent off. That's almost half price. So, I think it's a good deal. They have the two pack if you want the dual uh, six inch ports, seventy nine ninety nine. That's typically a hundred and twenty nine dollars. And they have the well, they have the same thing here, but it's a one percent off. It's ninety nine ninety nine for the eight inch ports. But definitely these three here, the 6-inch, the 8-inch, or the 10-inch, if you're thinking about any of these, uh, check and see when this deal ends because you're going to definitely want to pick these up at this price if you've already been looking. Um, I've got a link to every deal I've talked about in the description below. So if you guys want to check those out, click that link. They're down there. You can uh, get the deal, and hopefully they're not gone by the time you go to actually get the deal. So. Let's see what's going on in chat, and um, let's see what you guys got here. God, God is in the chat. What's up? <laughs> uh, let's see who we got here. Maddie Devine, if you find prefab boxes, I'm sure they're worldwide for sure. Dragon says when he clicks the link, it takes me to your page. Is Dragon, is that the link that I left for the um, StreamYard? Because the StreamYard link should have brought you to a web page. I'm going to drop it below just in case. If any of you guys want to join in and uh, get in, chat, talk about deals, whatever you want to. Base head go boom. Ah, what's going on, man? No sweat. Mark, good point. Not as much toughing with round ports, too, for sure. <laughs> DIY, the guy, sewer pipe. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. You know, I should do I, It's kind of what I'm doing now, but I need, I would have to turn on all the lights, get the studio lights set up, and uh, get me a co host, and we could demonstrate the products. And yeah, we can do some HSN for car audio. <laughs> Oh, let me see. Jesse Strong says he's he'd love to make an enclosure that uses linear actuators to move the wall to go up from a burp SPL to a seal daily. Yeah, that'd be cool. I think so. Stormy Young asks, uh, what do you think of the phase plug in the middle of some spe speakers, or do you like the solid cone? Uh, the phase plug in, let me close this screen here. The phase plug in a mid-range speaker, that is, 
that's for something. It's for diffraction. It's for beaming. There's several things that that a phase plug can help with in a mid range speaker. So that is more uh, function over form. In a subwoofer, I like the flat cone because I think they just look cool. But you know, that's less. Um, I think the the advantages of the dome or the dust cap in a subwoofer is less apparent than what you get in a mid-range or mid-range when they have those phase plugs they definitely make a difference it doesn't mean it could be good or bad difference but some of them have removable face plugs so you can try them both ways to see which way you like better let me get a drink of uh water here real quick All right. Must be setting on my phone. It's not taking me to the website. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I don't know what's going on with that. Hmm. Let me try to do that link one more time. I, I'm not sure what's going on with that link. It should... Um, it should work, but all right. Uh, must be sitting on my phone. I was thinking about using a flared, a flared port with my fourth order. Ken Alexander, what's up, my dude? He's in there. Ah, oh, Seth says the link goes to my YouTube channel. Oh man, total fail on my part, guys. I don't know what's going on with that. It it worked the other day. But it should be. Let me see if I if I have some other options here. Yeah, and if you guys tried to join while I was screen sharing, look at the other screen. I didn't see you on the thing. It should pop up. That link should pop up. Streamyard. You should have a mic check uh, level. Oh, there we go. Mister Van Hoy has joined us. Yeah, hey, we made it. We made it in. It worked. There he is. What's going How on? How doing? We can... I don't have any light in here. Yeah. I'm in the truck, man. I'm, yeah, I'm on the road. I'm working. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Would you say it's snowy out there? Yeah, it sucks. Can I, can I flip my camera around? I don't, I don't know. I can, yeah. I can, I can, I can go like that. Oh, man. Dude. And that's what, the, that's what the road looks like. That's what the road has looked like all day. Hey, you just you've been having to drive on it all day. Uh huh. Hey, how, that's yeah. fine. No, I'm sure no one pulls in front of you hastily. Oh or... yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Nah, nah. And you know, I'm I'm from Georgia, so <laughs> I'm up here. I'm I'm doing like 55, 60, two hand death grip. You know, yeah. <laughs> and all these other all these other guys are flying by me in cars, trucks. You know, they're doing 65. They're doing like 70, 75 miles an hour. Like you know, and I'm like, no. That's okay. I'm making a, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm making it home for Christmas. Y'all go right yeah. ahead. <laughs> no kidding. Damn. Arrive alive, huh? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I got I got a good one for you, Vegas. All right. Okay. Does do you does well? Do you have an issue? I because I, I know I personally do when a lot of people call in their enclosures a fourth order or a sixth order. Yeah. And it's not. There's a difference between a wave guide and a six order or a fourth order. Let's just stick with fourth order. Yeah. Um I but don't you can't yeah, I don't can't have a problem. Have, we use terminology right? so loosely in car audio. Uh, yeah. I mean like we call uh oh, we call an RMS rating on our subwoofers RMS, although it's actually nominal. It's a nominal rating, so Right. We, we're we're pretty loose in car audio with our terminology, but you're right. A lot of people call, you know, fourth orders or six orders. They just call them that because it, it kind of looks similar. Yeah. And you, and you just got like a single wall there, just kind of radiating the air in a certain direction and not an actual tuned port. And that's more yeah. of a wave guide, or, or I guess in this day and age, it should be a pressure guide because the subs are doing so much more than, yeah, and I th I think it you know that's that's a big that's big in SPL uh world oh, yeah. 
where, where they're doing that. And I think it's just so it's easy because it looks similar and it's kind of the same idea. It's just not an actual true fourth order. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, I guess that's the end of that. <laughs> I was trying to bring one up, man. <laughs> no, that's a good one, man. <laughs> okay, um, um, another another one for you. We got. The, I love this one too. We got what? What is there? Three Korean ant manufacturers, or is there four? Um, I'm trying to think. I know that. I know so there's three. Orion owns a company. The one of them. Um. And then, yeah, there. I think there might be four, because they're okay. counting the one Orion owns. No, I really wasn't counting the one Orion because I was just thinking of the big three that, and then we have a hundred different amplifiers <laughs> yeah. made by the same three. Yeah, uh, <laughs> those people all claiming to be better. I love that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, some of them actually are better. Here's the thing: if I don't know if you're into tools, but if you look at like. Ryobi, Milwaukee, uh, Rigid, right. Right. and and even Hart from Walmart now, they're all made from TTI. Or, you know, so all those manufacturer, all those products are, are TTI products. And some of them, as you may know, like are way above, depending on what yeah. you buy. So I oh, think. Oh, yeah. The, I mean, you know, you can buy, you know, they got to pick and choose their parts, you know, 105 degree, you know, caps here, there, or. You know, let's make yep. sure to, you know, I I know that, but it's, but it's still just kind of, it's kind of yeah. humorous in its own way, you know, just like, oh yeah, you know, and, and, you know, it comes down to when you're not making your own product, it comes down to quality control. What kind of quality control are you using? Are you designing your own stuff or, you know, there's so many factors into it, but if you're quality controlling them and you're bending them out and, you know, there's going to be products that are going to fail run the manufacturer directly so if your quality control is on point and your customer service and your warranty is on point i think that's where you're going to make the difference if you're not building your own products yeah i think that's when wolfram wolfram's kind of killing it with that right now oh yeah his you know we uh we i had tried to get colin uh on the pod on the 12 volt talk and i still i need to hit him back up because he did agree to come on but his marketing like from the beginning when they started I mean, it, it was ingenious, and he's kept it going. So that that's what interests me, like the marketing side of it. And yeah, you know, he, he actually had he to deliver a good product, but yeah. Yeah, and he doesn't really seem to keep any more in stock than what he's selling. Yeah. Which is, a, good idea, which is a great idea because you keep demand up, and that way when you do get it in, you, got, you immediately got your return on your investment. Bam. Yep, for sure. Yeah, you only Yo. you only sell what you need. Buy and sell what you need. Yep. Yo, Ed's in the house. I know, man. I, I'm way far, way far back in the chat. Oh, <laughs> uh, I just, I just, I just seen, yeah, I just seen Third Era Ed pop up. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Ed, click the link, join in if you want, man. If if any of y'all want to join in, we can have a a a, uh, a three way talk. Hey, don't, hey, a bunch of dudes gonna be talking three way. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, as I was saying it, I was like, "Oh well, let's let's just lean into it, man." Just uh, lean as, as, as Big D say, "I'm yeah. out of here." <laughs> <laughs> That's how you see when when it gets awkward. This is what I learned. When when it gets awkward, you just gotta lean into it because if you don't, then it gets more awkward. Uh huh. So. Oh, you it, know what? You, you brought this one up the other day. I was going to say, um, I know you said you try not to look at them too much, but um, you've got think of try to think of um, some of your favorite troll comments on some of your videos. This ought to be good. Uh, um, I don't get a lot, man. Believe it or not, and I think it's because, oh, you know, I'm, I'm a smaller <laughs> channel, but I, I see them. I get so I I will tell you this. I have a person that goes around and dislikes every one of my videos as soon as it comes up. Oh, so, we all have that. <laughs> yeah. As soon as as soon as I upload the video, there's one dislike, boom. And uh, I know it's one person. It's It's got to be, I don't know. I haven't narrowed down who it is, but I don't really care. If, if they watch the video for a little bit, who cares? But Damn, I'm busted. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, man, I, 
I just I just brought that one over because you know, I think um, you probably seen yeah. it on Facebook where I shared that one guy that had put on oh, mine the whole thing. Yeah. You have no talent. You're no so talent like, productions. <laughs> like, oh yeah. Yeah, man. yeah that's. Uh, so I, was, I was just like, yeah, I'm so sorry. I forgot to ask myself what you would like today. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was actually working on a rebuttal video for that, and I was like, ah, I just want to <laughs> let it go because I was actually going to do like. The whole yeah. video just said, what does this, what kind of video would this guy like? I was going to put together like the kissing scene from Brokeback Mountain, <laughs> a couple of dogs humping. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah they, uh, I, I tell you what, what, when I start to get the troll comments is when it's brand. And, and we're going to talk about this week because that's one of my topics I want to talk about brand loyalty. And, you know, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? But, especially like the sundown versus high Q the sundown guys, yeah. a couple of them came out and they were, you know, they were mad. And I was like, Hey man, I actually really like sundown. I just literally reviewed the SD three and called it the best SQ sub that nobody's talking about. Right. But, uh, it, but, but because I thought that the, the high Q was a, a better value, you know, it really it pissed them off, and I, and I even done the box swap to kind of appease them because I knew right. I knew in my head anyways that the box swap would help that sub, and it actually ended up being louder in that sub. So if that's what you're going for, you know, the thirty more thirty dollars more would probably be well spent. If you just want a better all around sub, I think that you know the high Q is it. But yeah, that's yeah. that's when I start to get the comments. That was a good video. That was actually really good. And especially swapping the boxes around, that was yeah, that was spot that was spot on. Way and to I do think it. I think we're gonna have more. I want more of those. I want to build an like I said yesterday. I want to build another enclosure. Um, I've actually ordered two six point fives. Uh, they're coming my way. Well, one of them was, and one of them I had to get a refund on because dude just never shipped it off eBay. So oh, I'm gonna have to reorder that from another site. So yeah, I've quit. I've had to quit oh, messing around with eBay. Oh yeah, that you know I I'm always on there. It's it 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 just depends on what it is, you know. I just but they, go I've I've had to Amazon. return a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, I just Amazon rather go straight too. Amazon. That way you you know you're getting on you know new stuff, whatever. And because I mean I got to be yeah. You know, last time I actually I sold on eBay, sold a um, pair of mint old school kicker see um kicker comp 15s i picked them up from a guy i fully totally inspected them thoroughly blah 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 and even after i got them home i went through and inspected them everything again and they were perfect absolutely perfect yeah ended up selling them on ebay and it was like two weeks after a guy got them one of them was blown i knew i'm demanding my money no you're not <laughs> <laughs> no you're not <laughs> i got vi i got video proof that these things were in absolute both of them were in perfect condition <laughs> yeah you know you and, need to and, file a claim with ups or maybe a motor shifted or something but um yeah in two weeks after the fact no you're not <laughs> yeah I've been pretty lucky on that, but it it is always if you're selling, you're at at, at a disadvantage on eBay. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, I mean it's it's almost worth not some of the prices of new stuff. It's almost not even worth trying to sell old stuff yeah. anymore. That's for sure. I mean, because I know I had those things listed locally because I didn't really want to go through eBay, and um, I think I had them listed locally for like two months. And never even got one hit on them. Yeah, like, dang man. I'm that's like, wow. that's the thing about eBay is they they know they got the marketplace for used gear and stuff like that, and they really they, I mean they charge you on shipping now, and yeah, it's it's it ain't. Yeah, it's I'll, not I'll any poke good. Around, I'll poke around on there just if there's anything interesting, but then I'll yeah. usually go to if it's something I really want, then I'll check with Amazon, and it'll be like, okay, well this guy wanted. You know, I can go and get it brand new for ten bucks more. You know, and free shipping. Yeah. So you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and sometimes your, the warranty. <laughs> yeah, I'm not buying your used crap, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Father Bass I mean, says me too. He he gets one dislike as soon as a video comes out. Yep, <laughs> it's automatic, man. Are you 
RV, are are you going around just uh just disliking everyone in the karate? Is that how you do? Yeah, man. That's you know, <laughs> I got the I got the drive I got to drive everybody over to me. We got the you know no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, third air is talking about how someone left him a troll YouTube comment was flagged. Hey man, I can't help it. <laughs> it that's what I do, be, man. Can't believe anybody <laughs> a troll head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. He said he thinks uh budget base head does a better justice to an enclosure video than who than Hexabase? I think that's who he's talking about. You know, I, I like Hexabase, but man, he always he goes a little too technical, and then you know, it just seems to stop a little short of actually of a simple explanation. <laughs> it's like yeah. you're waiting, and then you're like, ah, I almost knew how that worked. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, so, mm. <laughs> yeah, as long you know, on the videos where I I understand what he's talking about, or I got grab the concept, he. He really helps me like fill in the blanks that I that I don't understand. But uh on videos that I really don't understand the topic, I mean, sometimes he's he's up here, I'm down here like, <laughs> what in the I need uh, I need one of those videos to break down and see uh what heck right. I so I need someone to break down his videos for me. Oh, we got <laughs> hey dragons in here. What's Why up, man? The- <laughs> Much man fell. I ended up using it on the uh, work phone. It went through mine didn't, for whatever reason, though. Oh, nice. What's going on, Dragon? Not much, man. Just found a rest area for the night. Oh, uh, yeah. There me too. <laughs> Truckers for life, man. Uh, no, I hate this. I hate this job. I don't know how I fell. In. I don't know how I fell into it. There was only two good things. There was only two things I was decent at. Car audio. And driving, and when the bottom fell out of the car audio back in 2004, 2005, I went to the other thing I was good at driving, and this I've been trapped in this box since. I hate it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was not too bad. I was for prior military, so yeah, the wife likes it all right, makes money. So, <laughs> so Dragon, yeah. you got any topics to discuss? No, I'm just tired of driving. I'm just, just hanging out. <laughs> Hey, I'll, I'll, here's what I'll do. I'll ask you guys questions from the comment. We'll, we'll see what they got going on in the comments. Uh-oh. All right, Mark asks, <laughs> has anyone heard the Hutchinson subject? Have you guys heard them? No. No. Have you looked at them, though? I've looked we're, at we're, them. We're trapped in boxes. <laughs> yeah. I've, looked, I've seen pictures online. Does that count, then? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all I've seen, too. I haven't seen them in person. But they look they look crazy cool. I mean, but 450 for an eight, that's a stretch. I, yeah, it I it's, it's well worth it, I'm sure. I just, when I'm spending my money and I see 450 for eight, eight inch sub, I, it just, you know, it holds me back from pulling the trigger. You know, it, I'm crazy. I, I, I went totally opposite of everybody. Back in the day when I was really full time in, I was doing crazy stuff with tents and I never would run over four. I just had this, everybody else was using 15s and 18s back in the day, and I was sitting there doing crazy stuff with 10s. And now, after I come back from my little hiatus and got back into it, I was like, ah, you know what? I'm going to mess with the big stuff this time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah now, that- now, now all you guys are playing with six and a halves and doing crazy stuff with six and a halves and eights, and it's like, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the... I don't know what it is. I've always been into the smaller speakers. Um, I don't know why. I'm just fascinated with something so small that can produce so much. And like I said before, the eight W six is a tree of them. Has really turned me on to that. Oh yeah, yeah. That was that was always a nice setup. Matthew Mass Massey, uh, if you enjoy particular pro, for example, subs, but uh, enjoy, uh, enjoy, let's say, ants for another from another. Is that considered not to be brand loyalty if you don't choose to run all the necessary necessary components from one? Matthew, I, that's going to be a topic for sure. So if you have brand loyalty questions, I'm going to talk deep on that. Uh, I don't know, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day, but I'm going to, that's one I really wanted to talk about. Would you, you guys got any thoughts on that while you're on? I like to use all the same components, but it, 
in reality, it doesn't always work out that way, though. Uh, back when I was in high school, I had all, all high phonics, amps, and uh, lost acoustic uh, mids. But now I've got that uh, Wolf 2400 and a JBL uh, AB. Uh, so, or hey, JL Audio. Hey, I'll tell you, I've been to a few shows here recently, smaller shows around my area. And that, that Wolf from 2400 is freaking everywhere, man. Everyone's got that. I like it. I have it running uh, one ohm, but that was in the other truck. This truck here, I haven't got anything hooked up in yet. It's a pain in the butt in this Volvo. The uh, freight line was easy. Yeah. But this Volvo's got this automatic, and it, yeah, I can't pull the uh, dash, the uh, stereo out without pulling out the iDrive automatic crap. So I, I wind up I'm out in a yeah. separate stereo and uh, put some speakers up in the window in the in the little pods at some point. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, uh, let me see. I was just gonna interject real quick. Brand, yeah, staying completely brand loyal, eh, sometimes you really can't because, like, if you go audio, like, let's like, um, now I haven't really done a whole lot of like, but I know they make really great mids and highs, like Audio Frog. I don't know what kind of subs they have, but I doubt they're gonna, for most people. Looking for a little more SBL, they're probably not going to work out too good. But you know, when they don't make any amplifiers, so you yeah, know, if you if, you know, it depends on and speakers. I love I love when you're in the chats or on Facebook or even on these things and people, you know, what kind of speaker do you think I should buy here? Speakers, you've always got to listen to. Exactly. I mean, I Take had a CD we, I, like. <laughs> yeah, I mean. You know, this is a story from a car that we did back in the day was um, we went, it was this couple and it was, I think, a Honda Accord. It was like a 2000 Honda Accord or something. And they bought whatever salesperson, you know, sold them. You know, I think it was a Kenwood head unit when they had and sold them, you know, Kenwood six and a half and Kenwood six by nines. And they were like. And I mean, it sounded fine. It was what it was. It was a deck and four speakers. And it was like, but they were not happy. They were like, it has no bass in it. None. They were like, we need to, I was like, okay, well, let's try something else. So we pulled all the Kenwoods and dropped in Pioneers. They still didn't like it. So we're like progressively stepping down, you know? And it's like, so finally I said, screw it. I grabbed, um, some dual six and a half and some dual six by nines. They were both coaxial sets. <laughs> Threw them in the car, and they come out and listen to it. And you know, Honda Accord's real easy to speakers in, and um, and they loved it. It it was what they wanted, and it was just progressively cheaper. And they never even really asked for a refund. They just wanted something that sounded a whole lot better. But of course, we gave oh, them geez. their money back for the difference, you know, in the speakers. But I mean, it was crazy because it was just like when they, once they got them in the car, it was like, and I and I had to agree to them. It had like no punch to it, no nothing. We put those dual six and a half and dual six by nines, man. And it was like, you know, it was like okay, that's what they wanted. Cool. And so, you know that that is so common because people upgrade their door speakers with coax. And they're like, hey, I lost all my bass. Well, yeah. The speaker you used them before, one cone. <laughs> yeah, is one cone. It, it 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 handled maybe fifteen watts maximum. The efficiency yeah. was really high. Like you're gonna need to amp to re to reproduce that sound. You're gonna need to amp on these speakers. So that that's pretty common in my experience, anyways. Oh yeah, I mean that's just you know, uh, but going on stuff like that kind of makes me not really miss retail either. <laughs> yeah no for sure um well i hate to dip out on you guys but i gotta edit some video tonight i gotta have something out by tuesday but um i think i had one more question someone asking about stickers check the description every one of my videos in the description you can find out how to get stickers um outside of that i appreciate you joining me rvh dragon 51 um, if you guys want to come on later in the week, you're ha you're welcome to. I'm gonna leave links in the chat. You know, I appreciate you guys coming on and chatting it up with me for a little bit, though. Absolutely. Oh, no problem. Thank you for the invite. Yeah, no sweat. And in the immortal words of um, your cohort and Big D, 
dummy. I'm yeah. out of here. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Take care. All right. Uh, catch you all later in the chat. I appreciate you coming on. I will be on tomorrow. Same place. Don't know the time yet. So, uh, you know what? Let's talk about brand loyalty tomorrow. That'll be my topic for tomorrow. So you guys know you have any questions, you want to get on online and chat. Uh, if you want to join me live around 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock uh, Central Standard Time, that'll be the probably the most likely time that I'll be on. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Again, this is day three. We still have what? I don't I don't like math. Nine more days to go. So uh until next time, I'll catch y'all later. <laughs>